Okay, we are going to jump in to code.org, Unit 7, Lesson 6, Libraries Investigate. Um, and as it says, we are investigating. So a couple of things here, uh, and this shows you the power of using a library, how it can abstract away a lot of detailed information. In this case, we have a pretty cool app that is running on 14 lines of code, including some spaces. Um, we click Run. We type in the name of a state. Uh, we could type in Hawaii. And it's going to return the name of the state, the abbreviation, a flag, a seal, and a city. We could try another one, uh, New York. All right, and there we go. And we could try that for all our different states. OK. Um, not found so there is something if, if we have a typo or if it's not found um, so what's going on here we set up a variable there's a variable called state and then we have an on event the click button is clicked then state is going to get the text that was typed in by the user okay so far so good then we're going to set the text of the state output area which let me click reset so we can hover over and see it all right that is right here all right it is going to be the value stored in state with a hyphen and then state library dot abbreviation and the parameter state or in this case an argument sorry um, argument state so that has a value is plugged in then we set image URL three times for the skyline the seal and the flag each time coming from this state library um, so what we have we have a library that is, has been loaded for us in here the name of the library is State Library. If you notice, it is capitalized to start with. So this indicates the name of the library and then dot and then the name of the function. So within the State Library, there's a function called State Abbreviation. There is a function called State Skyline. There is a function called State Seal. There is a function called State Flag. And there is a function called Random State. However, because we have imported this library, we didn't have to write any of that code. We can simply call this function using the argument we need and it does it for us now you can click on this to show code in any of those you choose this is the library um, good commenting here it is very important if you are exporting a library that you provide good commenting so that others can make sense of it to kind of explain what's going on and as we can see for example that state abbreviation function um, the parameter state name in that case we pass the variable state into it because that allowed us to pull the user input um, so the first example I use we the argument was technically Hawaii so Hawaii passed through and then we have a local variable it is a list coming from the US states data set and it's a list of all the state names all right I would bet that there are 50 items in that list then we have all state abbreviations we're getting column getting the code name then we're going to traverse all right, the state list, and basically what we're going to say is if all state names are at I is the same as the state name, we're going to convert it to lowercase, and then we're going to return all right, whatever is matched. Okay, If there is no match, it's going to say not found. Now what this means too with this return being placed inside the loop, it may not necessarily go through the whole list. It's just going to go until it finds the one it's looking for. So that's kind of cool. The other functions work similarly, except we are, again, finding the state, the state name, aligning it with the proper column, and setting skyline, or setting seal, or setting flag. All right, so pretty cool. All righty, um, we're going to click Finish. All right, this one is uh, a throwback to my childhood, something called Pig Latin, which uh, this works a little bit differently than the Pig Latin I learned, but it's mostly similar. So what this does, it um, will take a phrase and convert it to the child language Pig Latin. Um, so it says, run this program and read the code carefully with a partner. Try several different inputs. Discuss with the partner. Be prepared to answer questions. Okay, we're not going to ask you questions. Um, and it does tell us to reread the documentation for each library. Add a console log statement to the end of the program and call a function. Put in a reasonable argument in the space for the parameter. For example, all right, try the word pizza, see what it does. So it just kind of wants us to play around with it, test it out. It says now add console log statements to test the rest of the functions. Is it what you would expect? Okay, so let's look again at this one a little bit more than the state. We got 38 lines of code. Um, I might need to update my version history. I may have already done those codes. So let me start over. 
so that I am at the beginning. Okay. So on event, the Pigify button is clicked. We're going to update screen. Okay. Well, what does update update screen entail? All right. We're getting a all right, variable. It is local. It's called text. We're going to get that from the text input. And then we have a variable called statement that passes the text. So te whatever we type in is going to be our argument that passes into the Pigify function. All right. The Pigify function uses just the abbreviation STR, which is short for string. Um, that is our parameter. And it is going to create a list at right, strings library. And then the function is split strings by space, again, with the parameter STR. Then we have a new list. Okay, and then it says four. All right, we're going to go to the length of the list. First, all right, to start with, the list is going to be I. So we have a first letter, then all but first. Um, so basically, it's going to take the word, break it down into the first letter, and then the rest of the word. Um, and then we have a temporary variable here um, that we'll need in a moment. And then we're going to say if the list length is less than four, all right, temp is going to get whatever is in the list. Else, all right, we're going to pass it through that strings library. And if that's true, we're going to add A, um, which is a little pig Latin to it. Um, and then else we'll do rest plus first. All right, so again, we could go look and then we're going to return the new string, which is a variable that joins. So basically what this is doing, it is taking a word or a phrase, um, kind of breaking it down and kind of piecing it apart, adding a little pig Latin to it, um, kind of deconstructing the word or phrase, um, adding the A's and nays and whatnot in the front of it and the end of it, and then piecing it back together as a new string. Um, so we could look, so we've got first letter, all but first, has vowel, all right, and split string by space. All right, so what it wants us to do is just do a simple console log for um, any of this, so string first letter. Okay, so let's do some console logs. So again, if I go back to my library, all right, I've got one, two, three, four. So four different ones. So we'll do four different console log calls. All right, we'll do one, two. Actually, I'm going to do, yeah, because it's going to be a different function each time. Three and four. Okay, and each one we're going to call a different function. And yeah, this is, okay. It should let me call the function because it has a return. And it's not letting me because it is being difficult. So this might be the case where we have to switch to text mode. Um, and in text mode, let's see if it lets us. There we go. I always need to get rid of that. So let's get rid of the lines. And then we can drag each one. And I'm sure it's going to yell at me. Okay, and alrighty, so I've got a yeah, I've got an extra semicolon, so I have to fix that. Okay, and now it's probably telling me something with string has not been declared. So let's type in a string. So all right, let's just do um, is there pizza question mark? Okay. And again, this is probably going to be different because it's all first letter, but um, let's just copy that phrase and just kind of see um, how that phrase works. And then we'll look at the individual word as well. So let me, it did not copy. Let me try that again. Alrighty, a paste and a paste. Alrighty, now we can go back to block mode and magically 
it let us put that function call in there. Okay, so a little code.org glitch. Alrighty, and let's run. Okay, so we kind of see the resort. We have ah, there, true is there, pizza. So, um, what the first function does, all right, it takes the first letter, ah. All right, all but first, it's there, pizza. All right, third function has vowel, true. All right, fourth function, all right, is there pizza? All right, and it kind of splits it into three different words, is there pizza? So that's kind of what each one does. Now let's look and see what happens when we put it all together. I'm gonna to reset. I'm gonna enter that exact same phrase in here and say, is there pizza? I don't need to put quotes here because it's gonna be pulled as text. Pigify is here to eats a pay. All right, so we can see all of these being used together to form that pig Latin phrase. All right, it's kind of cool. All righty. All right, um, why is it important to use meaningful names for functions in your library? It is important to use meaningful names for functions uh, everywhere um, because one yourself is going to help you remember what it does um, when you need to call that function. It makes more sense, and obviously when you're sharing it with others, uh, they can easily make more sense. Like, for example, just then is, you know, first letter and all but first. All right, pretty reasonable to say, okay, this probably has something to do with the first letter, and the other one has something to do with everything but that. Um, same thing with the state library. We had um, like a flag. We had an abbreviation. It was named well. We could figure out what it did. So that naming convention is extremely useful um, for yourself and others with your libraries.